Welcome back to Oddball, Charlotte Wilder, Amino Hassan, joined by a very special guest. He's a Hall of Famer. He's a seven-time <laughs> uh, All-Star, seven-time All-NBA. His name Tracy McGrady. I worked with this guy for years over at ESPN. And now you are the owner of the Ones Basketball League. Last year was the first season. This year we got, we're getting a, a documentary, a four-part Showtime documentary series, Bonded by Ball, Inside the OBL. It's about that inaugural season yeah. last year. Tracy, what was – you were a great one-on-one -on -one player. That was all right. We're going to get to that in a second. What makes a great one-on-one -on -one player in this league? Um, I think other than your skill set, which is very important, yeah. uh, it's your mentality, right? I mean, you, you, you're not on an island, and behind you you have a seven-foot right. shot blocker back there, or to your left you got a, uh, a teammate, to your right you have a yeah. teammate. You don't have that. You're on an island by yourself. So um, – Let's say we play into a game to seven. You are a very shifty type guy, and you have a, the ball on the string. You're good with your handles, and I'm guarding you. And you make a crazy move and drop me on point one. Right. We still got six more points to go. Crowd has swayed to your side. Mm. Like, I got to be mentally wired differently yeah. to stand in front of you again for these next six points. So I think this is mentality that you got to have to play one-on-one -on -one basketball. You got to be built differently. And I can honestly say this. You know, I've played against some guys in my NBA career, and I'm talking about all-stars, mm -hmm. and I've seen some guys that, you know, were shaking in their boots. Who is the toughest guy you had to play one-on-one? -on -one? I see the question. I mean, <laughs> God rest him, you know, the dead, my, my brother Kobe. Yeah. You know, he's the fear, most fierce competitor that I think we all have seen come through this league other than MJ. You had a great story of you and Kobe going at it down in Orlando where you were hurt. And he knew it, mm -hmm. and so he started exploiting that to his advantage. That's what he, yeah. Well, he was he was a student of the game, man, and, and he, you know, uh, was like, you know, a, a lion. He's going for that weakness. Mm -hmm. He smells any type of weakness. That's what he's going to try to exploit. Uh, didn't work. I had 38 that game. <laughs> 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 I, I had 38 that game because you know I had back problems, right. and I managed, you know, throughout my career to play. Uh, with a herniated disc in my back before I eventually had surgery mm -hmm. after my career. But, um, yeah, he, he, he tried it. <laughs> so, Charlotte, yes. i got to explain something to you about Tracy because Tracy is the most humble but also proud superstar I think I've ever been around. <laughs> because you'll say things that are like, you're like, oh, you know, I was all right or whatever. But then he'll say things like, oh, man, like, you know, I had 38 on or whatever. So With the herniated disc. Let, let me give you a great example. Yeah. Tracy... All, the year he was eligible for the Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. the whole year we're all telling him, you're going to be a Hall of Famer. He's like, no, no, not me. Not me. What? No. So finally, <laughs> it happens, and he's, all, he's still shocked and surprised. Yeah. Now watch this. We threw him a, a surprise party yeah. in Houston yeah, mm -hmm. for, his, uh, for this announcement, yeah. right? His wife brings him to the hotel uh, and tells him that they're going to a Lauryn Hill concert. And he believed it. You, but why did you believe you were going to a Lauryn Hill concert? Because I know my wife knows how much I love Lauryn Hill. She loves Lauryn Hill. And I was excited about that. I wasn't even thinking about no party of anything. My, matter of fact, I just had foot surgery, right? right. So I'm not thinking she's going to throw a freaking party. I got this boot on. You know, I'm going to be chilling in a, a suite or something watching Lauryn Hill. Lo and behold, I walk out to the pool deck and I see all these people. I'm like... I see familiar faces, like, man, what's going on? And I was like, oh. oh. So she, yeah, it, it, it was phenomenal. Um, you know, I was, it was so, uh, I was so proud to see, you know, a lot of familiar faces and, and people that I work with. It was your whole um, basketball yeah, it was, life. Yeah, it was whole, my whole basketball life. But was any part of you a little bummed that it wasn't a Lauryn Hill concert? <laughs> no, I, I had <laughs> forgot all about the concert. At the, <laughs> no, for real, because, yeah. I mean, these, these folks took their time out of their schedule and flew to Houston to yeah. come and, and celebrate this, and that was so much love, man. Why didn't you ever believe us when we told you you're going to be a Hall of Fame? It, it's just something I never thought I would be, bro. <laughs> Honestly. Well, how did it feel once it happened? Oh, that, to me, because, you know, we played a game to win championships, right? Um I was never fortunate enough to be on the championship team. And when that happened for me, because I, I went through a dark time in my career. Uh, mm -hmm. When I went from being a top player in this league to, you know, not being celebrated because of the knee surgery mm -hmm. that I had, 
that was devastating for me. It was hard for me to get over that. Um, so there were some dark days, some dark times. And, you know, I was questioning, why me? Why me, God? Why are you doing this to me mm -hmm. right at this time? Because we just got run our test to our team. And oh, this is and what Houston, I felt yeah. like. Yeah. yeah, in Houston, this is where I felt like, oh, we about to compete for a championship. Right. This is what I've been waiting on. I can't compete. Ugh. I'm not the same guy. Like, that was stripped away from me. So I'm, I'm questioning why me. And then when I got nominated for that, like, that was my championship. It was like, ah, oh, okay. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> you guys. I see you had something in store for me. How, how did you pull, out, pull yourself out of that dark time? Because you ended up reinventing yourself and becoming yeah. a really good vet kind of role player after being a star man just really having extensive conversation with people that i i trust to you know lend their advice to me right and that's what really got me through and of course you know relying on my faith every single day but it was it was tough it was very challenging because it took me two years before i was even pain free for real yeah two years oh, wow. i yeah. can't imagine that oh it's it tough and it, you know i mean that's what we put our body through and it wasn't it wasn't a it was a challenge within myself to see if I could get back mm -hmm. on an NBA team. And that's why for my last four years, I was just challenging myself to see if I could put in this work mm -hmm. after not being, you know, the player that I once was. My athlete athleticism has just declined tremendously. <laughs> I'm not the same player and it's like, all right, now I gotta work rely on my skills. I have skills. Let's see if, you know, a team can uh, utilize this. Yeah. You still six nine though, and, <laughs> and shoot the the, the ever loving hell out of the ball. I, was, I I know when I was in Phoenix, well, I was pushing for us to get you because I felt like we needed someone like that, even where you were in that stage of your career as a, a big guy who could pass and shoot. Yeah. In our system, yeah. I thought it would have helped a lot. Jeff Teague went on a podcast mm -hmm. and he talked about when you came to Atlanta mm -hmm. and you walked <laughs> in, and in the first practice they had. Teague on the starters and you on the uh, with the second unit mm -hmm. and you, you basically called him a bum and said I can't believe he's starting and, so, then, and then went at him basically y'all would go at each other after that I was a two guard and a small forward mm -hmm. when did I play point guard Never. Why, why would I be mad if Jeff Teague is the point guard that's not my position I right. don't play point guard why would I be mad at him for you know for them being in that position but I get it, you know. <laughs> new podcast, you gotta tell, you gotta tell some stories and sell some stories. So tell the story, T. <laughs> keep, keep telling him. He's a hell of a story storyteller. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'm gonna ask you about another story of your nickname, the Big Sleep. Yeah. So that that came when I was in Toronto. Okay. I'm from Florida, mm -hmm. right? I spent one year in North Carolina, uh, my senior year in high school, and then I get drafted to Toronto. I didn't know anything about Toronto but mm -hmm. the Blue Jays. <laughs> So I'm, I'm in this, you know, this place, not knowing nothing about the culture. Mm -hmm. It's freezing cold. <laughs> I don't deal with the cold yeah, like say, that. <laughs> so I'm in the crib. I'm in the house, and I, you know, I, I slept a lot. And when I got to Orlando, you know, I was so accustomed because when you're in the NBA, you have a routine that you're on every single day, and I stuck to my routine. And Bo Outlaw, I used to get on the planes. Before we take off, I'm in my knocked sleep. Out. I'm knocked out. And they wake me up when we land. And he gave me that nickname, Big Sleep. <laughs> I you, relate to it. I think it's great. I, I think it's a badge crazy? of honor. If you can sleep well, that's amazing. Listen. Yeah. I flew here yesterday from Houston. The flight is about, what, three hours. I was asleep <laughs> until about 10 minutes into the flight. I'm out. Didn't move. That's the best feeling it's a in gift. the world, man. It's a gift, really. You can sleep before you even take off. That's oh the God. best feeling in the world. Yeah. Uh, you talk about being in Orlando. When you got to Orlando, it was supposed to be you, Grant Hill, and Tim Duncan. Then it was you and Grant Hill, and Grant gets hurt, and it's just you. At that point, did you imagine what was going to happen to you? Obviously, you, you came to Orlando for an opportunity to play with two great superstars, and instead you became this one-man show where you led the league in scoring twice. Mm -hmm. What were your thoughts going through that, that period when it's like you're the only guy out there, really? Well, um, I relished it, the opportunity, really, because that's what I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, you know, leaving Toronto, coming to a situation where I actually thought I was going to be 
No bull crap. I thought I was going to be like a Scotty Pippen type dude. See, that, see what I'm saying? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's the dichotomy. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was going to be like a Scotty Pippen type dude. Grant Hill was Grant Hill. Right. You know, and I, I didn't know he wasn't going to be healthy. I thought he's had his surgery and what we was going to yeah. we was going to be fine. He was going to do some things. Um, but that wasn't the case. And the keys were thrown at it to a, a 20 year old. And it's like, you know, you got to carry us was now. 20, I was 20. No I was 20. I was 20. Yeah, Jesus. I was the 20. Baby. It was just, I had to adapt quickly of being a man for that team. And I didn't know I had the capabilities of, you know, doing some of the things that I did. I did put in the work, however, um, but I didn't know it was going to be like that. Right. But once I got a taste of, you know, uh, you know, who I was as a basketball player, I just started enhancing and sharpening my skill set. And you might remember the greatest dunk contest of all time when Vince Carter did all the crazy stuff. Right? Yes. Tracy was in that dunk contest. Yes, you and were. I, I, to this day, Tracy, I say, if Vince hadn't been there, and oh, we just took yeah, your dunks, yeah, yeah, okay. you would have won. Yeah. Like, you like you had a, a routine that would have won almost any other year, yeah. but Vince was Vince. Vince was Vince. Vince but you, you yeah. told me you didn't even want to do it. No. Why? Listen, I've been saying this since high school, <laughs> right, of what right. This, this, this guy can do. Um, he had to beg and plead for me to get into this dunk contest. And we were neighbors. We lived in the same building, and we just used to spend a lot of time together playing video games and talking. And he kept bugging me, and I just finally just gave in and said, I'll do it. He right. was persistent enough. You yeah. were like, just. All right, I'll get go. I'll, yeah, I'll right. go and play second or third. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I'll let you. Like, come on, man. Like, this this guy is, uh, he's such a you know, creative dunker. That's, yeah. that's who he is. Um, but he's much more than that as a basketball player. But Vince is an incredible in the, in the dunking. Mac, you, you know just know? came back from coaching AAU. Mm -hmm. Do you have to tell the kids that you coach like who you are, what your resume oh, is, or do no, they know? They, yeah, my kids know. My kids know. I, I think because of social media, it keeps me relevant and right. some of the things that are always coming out uh, about me, and I'm always included in it, and those kids send it to me. I can't let you go without asking. You worked with this guy for a long time. Give me your worst, best story. I love him so much. He's just such a great dude. You know what I'm saying? And I'm big on energy and vibe. And mm -hmm. every time I'm around him, I mean, it's nothing but love. And I just appreciate, See? you know, I every try. time. I had no, to try. I See, would this, never, this, 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 never. That, when, when it's great energy, it's a great vibe, I would never. It was the best of no. times, yeah. truly, yeah. Yeah. working with this yeah. guy. He's yeah. a Hall of Famer. Appreciate it, brother. Great. T Mac, yes, thank sir. you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And watch, watch the special, uh, the four part documentary series, Bonded by Ball. It's on Showtime. It's about the Ones Basketball League. You don't want to miss it. Well, folks, that's going to do it. The Dolphins are in the jacuzzi. The money's in the safe. The goldfish is in the bowl. <laughs> the early bird got the worm. And the worm got the bird back. No, it didn't. Well, sometimes it does. Not... It never happens like it that. It has happened before. I've never seen a I have worm get a bird? Absolutely, it has happened.